Welcome back friends, apologies for the lack of the video last week, your boy was on holiday, so today we'll actually cover the last two weeks of gaming's biggest news stories and leaks. But without further ado, my name is Big Winter and let's jump right into story number one and it has got to be the Power World lawsuit. When Power World launched in January of 2024, it was immediately coined Pokemon with guns and many were asking questions on the game's originality and legitimacy. And whilst Nintendo did not outright condemn the pocket pair here, they did release a statement in February of 2024 saying that they did not consent to the use of any patents or IP and they hinted that they would be in investigating for possible IP infringement. Fast forward to the 18th of September and Nintendo have officially filed for patent infringement in the Tokyo District Court. Pocket Pair released a statement shortly after confirming that they had received the lawsuit and highlighted the sadness that they would need to allocate time and resources away from the game's development ahead of a possible agreement with Sony to bring the game to PS5. Pocket Pair also said that Nintendo failed to notify them in their lawsuit letter of the patents that they were supposedly infringing, which as an ex-IP professional was especially interesting. In the UK, a cease and desist letter must include clear information on the IP that is being infringed including registration numbers where appropriate, but perhaps the Tokyo District Court is different. Nintendo have been known to be incredibly aggressive with defending their IP over the years and most recently received over $30 million in settlements in the 2018 lawsuit against Coldpole, so I doubt they would leave a serious blunder in their intention to file a lawsuit. Whilst personally, I of course see the resemblance in the Pokemon adjacent game, but I struggle to see a clear-cut lawsuit here. However, other experts and analysts are confident that Nintendo would not get their feet wet without knowing that they would win. Further research indicates that Nintendo took so long to file the lawsuit as they did not want to aim for the hip in their proceedings. They're going for the head. I honestly doubt Power World will be shut down in its entirety here, and what is most likely, looking at previous case studies, is that Nintendo may win a large settlement fee from the game's profits and licensing agreements will be put in place. What do you make of this situation? Is this a fair defense of intellectual property or a Nintendo throwing their weight around again for financial gain? Power World has been publicly known since the 2022 Tokyo Game Show, so why wait to take action now after all the development and release is done? Probably because the game was just raked in shy of $450 million and Nintendo won a slice of that pie, but who could say? But enough of that and on to our next story looking at the next generation of Xbox consoles following the announcement of the PS5 Pro. I think it's fairly safe to say that Sony has been dominant in the console space over the last year or so with Sony shipping more than five times the hardware Microsoft were earlier this year and with Microsoft leaning further into the subscription service ecosystem, the console wars might just be coming to a close. However, you may remember a couple of weeks ago I spoke briefly on Microsoft's plans for the next gen consoles aiming for 2026. Courtesy of a Windows Central report, we've actually had some more light shared on what to expect. 2026 will also be the big 25-year celebration of Microsoft and Halo, and to celebrate the year, it looks like Microsoft are switching things up. Unlike Sony with their solo console releases, Microsoft have been taking a two-pronged approach for a while, with the Xbox Series X being the more robust and complete model, and the Series S being the more affordable digital-only model. It would seem in 2026, Microsoft will be keeping that two-pronged model with one next-gen console and their entry into the handheld scene. Whilst no specs or concrete details the handheld have been released, I'm honestly not sure how I feel about this. As someone that loves the Steam Deck with its open ecosystem, I'd struggle to see where a handheld from Microsoft would fit in my day-to-day, -day, but for someone in the Microsoft ecosystem, I could see the appeal. It's possible the handheld will be a fully-fledged standalone competitor to the Lenovo Go and the Steam Deck, it could have its own closed ecosystem like the Switch 2, or it could be a simple cloud and streaming solution like the PlayStation Portal, or it could have elements of all of the above. However, with the development of the Xbox Game Pass cloud system over the last couple of years, I'd be willing to bet money that the cloud gaming experience would be a massive selling point for the device. What do you think? Does the thought of a Microsoft handheld excite you or do you think this will miss the mark? On to our next story, we're looking now at the God of War Ragnarok PC release. Last week on the 19th of September, God of War Ragnarok finally had its PC port released on Steam. I was half expecting to come back from a holiday with tons of positive commentary on how the new audience was loving the game I thoroughly enjoyed on my playthrough on PS5, but it seems that was not the story from the last week. Whilst the reviews have leveled back out to mostly positive, the game was meeting a similar fate to Helldivers 2 when the game announced that a PSN account was required to play the game. Last week, the game dropped to mixed reviews on Steam as outrage sparked primarily around that PSN requirement for a single player game, which makes no sense and you thought Sony would have learned their lesson after the public shamble around Helldivers 2. Unfortunately, this was not the case, plus many players were actually complaining about the game's stability on PC with many people experiencing a number of crashes, although it seems that this had been alleviated by the most recent patch on the 21st of September. However, it seems that the light is at the end of the tunnel as a mod over on Mod Nexus now allows for that PSN requirement to be completely bypassed. Although I wonder if it is the case that the game is just not available to countries where PSN is not available, much like the case was with Helldivers 2 for a while. But from SteamDB, it does look like there are players from Albania where PlayStation Network is not available, but they could just be using a VPN like many Chinese players were to play Wukong on Steam. And furthermore, as a bonus here, it seems as though Santa Monica Studios, the developers here, are currently hiring for a new next-gen console ambitious narrative combat 
that game. Nothing has been confirmed yet, but this could be the next installment in the franchise dropping sometime in 2027, or it could be a brand new IP altogether. And speaking of new things, let's jump right into our quickfire round of shorter stories and a summary of some of the key info dropped this week at State of Play. Starting us off, Helldivers 2 recently had a new war bond and a massive update bringing a ton of fun back into the game. Player counts went from a daily 10 to 20,000 all the way up to 50 or 60,000. And wholesomely, when asked about the success of Space Marine 2, Helldiver CEO was happy that people were currently spoilt for choice with good games. Speaking of Space Marine 2, following the mass success on launch, developers Saber Interactive have already commented that they already have ideas in the works for a DLC and a sequel to the game. They did recently say, honestly, they're just catching their breath following the launch, so they will need some more time before updates reach us. Speaking of DLC, during his one year anniversary letter, Liza P director gave fans a glimpse of an upcoming DLC to the game. In the letter, the director thanked the fans for their support and promised to make further improvements to the game in the upcoming DLC and sequel. So stay tuned for more updates. And honestly, this could be an entire video in itself, but let's speed run through everything I found interesting announced at the 24th of September State of Play, possibly saving the best for last. We've got a free DLC for Astrobot dropping sometime this year. Hell is Us will be coming soon and looks super dope. It's a third person action adventure game combining mini combat with semi open world exploration. Metro Awakening VR will be dropping for PSVR 2 and on Steam on the 7th of November. Arc Age Chronicles, a new action RPG, will be dropping likely next year and looks very cool. Power World literally just came out to PS5 as of state of play, so enjoy it while you can. Dragon Age The Veil Guard will be releasing on PS5 and Steam on the 31st of October. The Alan Wake 2 DLC will be dropping in October for the spooky season. A new Hitman VR game is coming this December. Towers of Ag Aghazba, a new open world survival game, will enter early access in November. Monster Wilds is releasing on the 28th of November. Horizon Zero Dawn is getting a remaster and is getting a Lego game dropping on the 14th of November. Stellar Blade is getting that Nier Automata collaboration DLC this year. And finally, the news I was waiting for, the long-awaited Ghost of Tsushima sequel is finally upon us dropping in 2025 and will be called Ghosts of Yotai. I'll link to the full info for a state of play in the description as there were just more things announced, but this video was already getting pretty long. So that is it for today. Drop a like and sub if you've enjoyed and found this helpful and ding that bell for next week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Take care out there and much love.